But we had a request for how you put a harness on a parrot and train them so that you could take them outside. I'm gonna to talk to you about it a little bit. I don't have anyone I'm harness training right now. And I might be later on, but <clears throat> I don't right now. And one reason is because I'm working on taming my sugar gliders. Binks is in here. Um, but I, I have, I think some footage. I mean, I have footage. I have so much footage, it's hard to go through. I have footage from when I did train my green cheek conure. And um, I will tell you that green cheek conures are easier to tame and train. <clears throat> I guess this is, the question is about being able to walk them and, and put them on a harness, not necessarily tame. So I'll, I'll say um, harness training. Um, <clears throat> I do think the Puria Conyers are a little easier when you have a more stubborn bird like Ketsy here. Hello, Balam. Uh, it's harder. <clears throat> so the request for a video on this uh, did not say what kind of bird it was. And any parrot, oh no, you're going to dock over the camera. Any parrot can be harness trained, but some are harder than others. So. I'm gonna start by telling you, hey guys, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parable Spawn. <clears throat> My latest release that just got published in the last couple of days is my, well, first earlier, about a month ago, I had my 30 perfect apartment parrots, and then just now, my, no, don't eat the earring. My um, new parrots companion care and journal just got published too, and that's awesome. I will tell you about those at the end. If you have a new parrot, um, it is an invaluable tool, especially if you don't know parrots. If you do, it probably has some good information for you anyway, but especially if you're new to parrots and you have a new baby that's eating your earrings. Although I did not write in there, don't let them eat your earrings, but now you know. All right. Um, so my mission is to help increase your blissful bond so that in this case you can weather the storm of harness training, take your parrot out for walks, increasing your bond and decreasing the need for rescues. Yes, weathering the storm. Putting on a harness is <clears throat> a hard thing to do. If you have a baby, it's easier than if you have an adult parrot. They do not like the harness. They will fight you. You will question whether the stress is worth it and you will also question who's more stressed out between you and the parrot <coughs> and then just when you get the harness on guys and <laughs> you the parrot will fight the harness the whole time try to bite it off um and day one is going to be for i don't know more than an hour maybe the whole time i if i were well when i harness train i decide I can make at least like a 10 day commitment <clears throat> and that I can have them on the harness for at least like four hours, if not six, which means like maybe you could go to work with them or whatever it is, but you want them to be with you. You want to have treats handy and then um, you want to be prepared because wait, don't, don't, don't knock my drink over <clears throat> because when at the end of those four or six hours, when you want to take the harness off, you are going to really hope that you listen to this following advice. And the advice is, um, you know, some of the harnesses, like by the time I get them, I don't, I look at them and I'm like, how in the world do I get this on? And then I, I have to go back and look at where I got them to try to figure out how to get it on. Um, so some of them are hard to get on. Some of them are really hard to get off. So as best you can, you really want to get one that is going to be easy to take off, relatively speaking, because when you're taking the harness off, you're going to be like, where did you just, oh, there you are. Got three kikes here now. One, two, three. <clears throat> you're going to be like, is it worth it? Should I just cut the harness? I have cut harnesses before. I. I had a harness and I was like, <clears throat> I don't care. I'm cutting the harness. I feel like it's torturing me, my bird, both of us, whatever. This is not worth it. So once you're prepared for that, 
because I have successfully harness trained. Oh, gee, thanks. Um, I've been blessed by Phoenix now. I've successfully harness trained several Conyers, um, at least a parrot lead, and I was just t taming them. I wasn't training all of them to go out. And um, I took Ursula's out on a harness out to a restaurant. That was really fun. I took Jules out. I took Ale out, but I just, I wasn't constant and consistent with Jules and Ale. I did not make the 10 days. Um, so it improved Jules, my Indian ringneck, sorry, in case you don't know, because you're not psychic, I know. It improved my Indian ringneck's tameness because I was taming him. And it gave Ale a safe way to go out with me. But um, you really have to be able to keep it up. And it's hard because, you know, if you have some time today, it doesn't mean you'll have time tomorrow. Okay, don't eat my, your, my rings either. So um, it's really important to be able to really dedicate the time. And it's just not easy. Do I think it would work if you only did an hour or two? I, I think so. I've never done that. I've always gone just you know, really committed to it because the more you could do every day, the faster the whole process goes. If you can only do an hour or two every day, hopefully you're consistent. If you're consistent for like three weeks or something, hopefully it'll get better. Um, with, with doing four to six hours a day, my conure went from not wanting me to pick him up in the cage and being kind of aggressive to looking forward to me picking him up and almost like coming to me and I'm watching the kikes to make sure they're not eating my new hammock and um, wanting, you know, being more mellow about letting me put the harness on. Um, they do get better about it. But like I said, you know, the first, I'm going to say out of those 10 days, the first three or four, maybe five, depends on how long you are, how long your sessions on are, and it depends on what kind of parrot you have. Because there's also individual personalities and some parrots are more easygoing and some are more independent and they they just, you know, like Ketsy, she's mellowed out some, but she, you could tell, she's a spitball, fireball. And she's just like, I do whatever I want <laughs> and I've got the beak to prove it. So she, she might be easier to, harness train now than she would have been a couple of years ago actually but uh, I would take doing a conure over her any day but part of it is because she's such a spitball fireball whereas Balam right there he would be easier he's getting a little older and a little more independent which makes him a little harder so age has something to do with it so when you are ready to make that commitment, I would get three harnesses, different styles, so that you can find the one that works best for you and your parrot. And now, oh, that's Phoenix. Now I've got all three of them here. And I would um, really make sure that I'm dedicating at least four hours a day, at least the first three or four days. I would understand that days number one and number two are the worst, the worst. If you make it through days number one and two, Day three, don't wake up going, oh God, I don't want to go through that again. Wake up going, this should get better today. You know, by day three and four, and if not three, four, things really, they, they start to kind of pick up the pattern and understand that even though initially the harness felt like horrible, now it's not so bad. So um, I'm going to show you some video. I am going to, in the video, tell you very quickly that I'm going to try uh, it's best if someone else helps you hold the bird. I'm going to try to hold the head, get the harness over the head kind of thing. Again, it depends on the harness. Get the harness over the body. Make sure it's as secure as possible. One time I had one of my conures. We were out for a walk and she got out of the harness. And it was by God's good grace alone that she didn't just fly off kind of thing. And, and she was tame. And that really helped. If she had been wild, I'm sure I would have lost her. At that point, I was like, I'm harness training you and I'm clipping your wings because I, I couldn't believe it. Um, that was the only time that's happened to me. So there's a nice, also a nice challenge. You want the harness to be fitting well enough that they can't get out, not so tight that they can't breathe or that they're really uncomfortable. Don't forget, parrots don't breathe like us. They don't have a diaphragm that um, moves their lungs. 
they don't have a diaphragm, their lungs don't move, they have air sacs, they don't have lungs. And so if you constrict the air sacs, it's kind of like if a boa constrictor constricts you, you can no longer use your diaphragm to pull in air. So if you constrict a parrot, like if you're holding them in such a way and you're you're constricting them, or if the harness were to do it too much, I hopefully harnesses are made not to be able to do that, but I don't know, then you know you could potentially like not let them breathe. So it is challenging. I do think you have to be very careful. Um, if I, I'll look to see if I, I think I've already done a video on my different harnesses. I've had like 10 or 14 in the last few years. Um, but I don't know if I still have them all and I put things away and then I can't find them. So I will see what I have and I will add, well, we'll make a video number two. So this is video number one. That's what I'll do because it's already 10 minutes on um harness training and this will be sort of preparing you telling you some of the things that you want to see if you're willing to do uh some of the expense because some of the harnesses are inexpensive like you can get some for i don't know 15 dollars in that neighborhood and then some are like 40 50 dollars uh do i think some work better than others i do but i think it almost depends on the parrot more than it does the harness believe it or not and that's why um, I do really think you should have two or three harnesses to see what works. Cause I had some that just didn't, did not work. Like I lay, whatever I first put him in, I was like, this does not work. And his might've been the one I cut. I can't remember. So, um, you really, really want to make sure that you have the right one and there's no way to know what the right one is. And you could say to me, well, Kaylin, I have a <clears throat> Conyer or I have a Taik. What's the right one? And I'll say to you, it depends on the individual bird, not the species. So really you want a couple different ones to test. Also, <clears throat> you have to decide for the training, I would definitely clip because like I said, if they get out, if anything happens, that's it. Whereas once they understand the harness, once they get it, their wings can grow back out. And now they're safe and secure. My number one priority is always safety and security. No, I do not like to clip. You, you've noticed my three kikes, they're flying around here. They're not clipped. My Indian ringnecks right there. I think you can see her. You can certainly hear her. She's not clipped. She didn't get up there by, uh, with help. She got up there by herself. Uh, Balam just flew up here. I don't, <clears throat> it's not like I'm a big believer in clipping. I am a huge believer and keeping my birds as safe and secure as I can. That is utmost paramount to me. So I would clip. It, it just means that if anything happens with the harness, your bird isn't gonna freak out and fly away because they will freak out. Something will happen. And it's not something freaky. A, uh, another bird will fly by, a car will honk its horn. Things will happen and um, you'll sneeze and, and they'll go, ah because they, one of the things that happens is when you put them on a harness and you take them out, one of the things they are getting used to is the harness. Another thing is the big blue sky. Um, another one is being outdoors, but back to the big blue sky, in the big blue sky, they are constantly watching it as their natural instinct. They're looking up like this to see what's up there to make sure nothing's gonna come and surprise them and jump them, you know, a bigger bird. So <clears throat> at first they are completely on edge, just completely because they are not in their own natural habitat. They're not in the safety and security of your home and they will just react and try to fly off. So again, um, I think for safety. All right, guys, so that's the setup. Now I will do a video on um, actually getting the harness on and starting to walk around with it for you guys. So watch out for that one and I will see you in the next feathery video. Uh, Binks is in here, but oops, she's sleeping. So instead I will upload some shorts of my cute little gliders. I have become an exotic parrot owner in the plural instead of just in the singular of parrots. Now I'm an exotic, oh, <laughs> I said that wrong. Now I'm an exotic pet owner because of the gliders. Okay guys, if you enjoyed me and my my kikes, please give us one of these and I will catch you in the next video.